name is Peter Ensicott. I'm a professor of psychology here in the, in the School of Psychology. Uh, I also head up the, uh, the research pillar one around child neuroscience and assessment within the DCSC. Um, and I just wish to begin today by, uh, with an acknowledgement of country. So I wish to begin by acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, the traditional owners of the land on which we are gathered today. We pay our respects to the local people for allowing us to have our gathering on their land and to the elders past, present and future. Parliamentary Secretary for Education, Deputy Vice-Chancellor, special guests, colleagues and friends, I'm delighted to welcome you here today to the official opening of the Deakin Child Study Centre. And a very warm welcome in particular to the Parliamentary Secretary for Education in Victoria, Ms Judith Grayley, MP, who is joining us today as our very special guest. So thanks so, so much for coming along. Today's an especially exciting day as uh, we take this opportunity to celebrate the dedication of a vision for inclusion, and, and in particular inc inclusion for young people with, uh, with developmental disabilities. Now, as you probably know, the Deakin Child Study Centre is a multidisciplinary research centre that's committed to understanding neurodevelopment from childhood through to adolescence. And the Deakin Child Study Centre, from an administrative point of view, sits within the, or it's a specialist centre, I should say, within Deakin University's Strategic Research Centre, uh, SEED, which is the uh, Centre for Social and Early Emotional Development, and it sits within the School of Psychology here at Deakin too. So it's now my great pleasure to introduce the Parliamentary Secretary for Education in Victoria, Ms Judith Grayley, MP. Uh, Ms Grayley was elected as a member for the Legislative Assembly for Narry Warren South in November 2006 and re-elected in both 2010 and 2015. Before becoming Parliamentary Secretary for Education in Victoria, Ms Grayley was Electorate Officer for both the Honourable Tim Holding, MLA, and the Honourable Alastair Hawk Harkness, MLA. She has been on the board at uh, Peninsula Health and was also a tutor in politics at both La Trobe University and the University of Melbourne. So please welcome to, De to Deakin University and to the stage, Ms Judith, Judith Grayley, MP. Ah, thank you, Peter, for that very kind introduction. I think my um, CV has been doctored a bit because you always let the they nearly always put in the fact that I, my, the thing I'm most fanatical about, and I know Matt Finnis is here, I think, from St Kilda Football Club, is that I'm a rampant Western Bulldogs supporter. So you can, next time, next time. Uh, so uh, it is a great pleasure to be here this morning to uh, officially open this terrific facility. I too would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respects to their elders, both past and present. In fact, I applaud, um, as I was walking around the campus this morning, I noticed that you had Womanjinka in your front area and I thought that's a really nice thing to have in a campus as big as this, as diverse as this, but it sends a nice, warm, welcoming um, message out there and an acknowledgement, a, a very special acknowledgement. I know that um, Professor Jane Danholder, the uh, Vice-Chancellor, can't be with us this morning, but I would like to put on my record my um, congratulations to her and her team at the university um, for really uh, making Deakin University one of the top universities in uh, the world, actually. Um, it's renowned. And, uh, and I know Jane is going to retire. I know she's got lots of passions and interests and I'm sure that she will um, have a very fruitful um, retirement. But I do want to put a place on the record, um, a, an acknowledgement of her incredible service, dedication and hard work that she's put in to making Deakin University such an exceptional place. And you know, the rise in the global rankings, that's always very important. So thank you, Jane. I'd like to thank, um, acknowledge um, Nicole Reinhardt, the director of the Deakin Child Study Centre. Uh, Nicole just took me on a tour um, with uh, Gary and uh, it is a fantastic space. Uh, there's going to be some great research done here. It's got terrific ambiance. It's got great spaces for learning, but it's a good place to work too, I think. And just, I think, speaking to, I think it was Jeremy over there about his research, the research that's going on here uh, is, I think, really well targeted and uh, will hit the spot with um, parents and families in the community. So well done, Nicole. So it's my pleasure to officially open the Deakin Child Study Centre and I know that this is a really big milestone for the centre which does, amongst other things, but really very important to us, uh, the support you give to young people with autism spectrum disorder. Uh, now, in 2016, the centre launched an Australian first study to ask young people with ASD what really matters to them. 
and the centre is also studying the effect of disrupted sleeping patterns in their well-being. This is Jeremy's research actually and so this is really important work. In fact I was relaying to Jeremy and the team that one of my neighbours has a child with ASD and often just before you know when dark comes I'll hear a lot of activity in that house and I'm thinking how is that family going to get to sleep tonight? Uh, you know, I'm sure the, the young boy wears himself out, but I'm sure in doing so that he creates a lot of um, disruption to the whole family. And uh, this research is not only making sure that he gets to bed more comfortably, but also that the fact that his family has a better lifestyle as well and the community um, reaps the benefit of that. So we know that this sort of research really does boost the understanding of ASD and how they're really effective ways of developing young people who have it and they and we know and we know this across the board that the earlier that we acknowledge what's going on there the more information we have about the situation the fact that we have high quality evidence-based support, we know that if we get that earlier, the more comfortable, the more interesting, the more special those goals that other kids have, our kids with ASD can reach as well. So that's why the reliable evidence that is being accumulated by the research here is very, very valuable. I'd like to acknowledge some of your partners here, uh, Irabina Autism Services, which I've had the pleasure of meeting in my electorate office. I've got to say, uh, working as a member of parliament, uh, numerous issues come into your office. But one of the ongoing ones, I've got to say, and I've got a couple at the moment myself in my uh, area, is dealing with parents who have got children with um, autism or have some sort of disability and these are really critical issues to those parents and they're very important to me as an elected representative as well but I've got to say they are hard to deal with uh, you know often the parent arrives in your office and they're just at the stage where you know where do I go to get help a lot of the time is I find in helping them having been a member of parliament for um, nearly 12 years, is putting them into contact with really good services. And I know that Irabina has been one of those. I'd also like to acknowledge that um, the AFL, and I saw the chocolates everywhere, the Ferrero Rocher, <laughs> have also been um, terrific partners in developing uh, access to sport. Now, Sometimes one of the things that parents say to me is, you know, by the time I get to the end of the week, I just want to do nothing. Uh, and I know that uh, we have to make it much easier for parents to be able, especially with kids that have a disability or autism in this case, to be able to access sport, cultural other community activities. So I'm really, really pleased that the AFL's been the partner. And Matt, I did see your St Kilda scarves on the um, board out there. So I know that um, St Kilda Football Club uh, have been, you know, leaders in this space. And uh, I know with your new facilities, there'll be even more opportunities for kids with uh, autism probably to, you know, even access the hydrotherapy pool down there that will be part of the um, really extensive development that's going on at the Saints Ground at Moorabbin. Uh, as a government, I've got to say, and I am here as a member of uh, Parliament, but I'm also here as a member of the government, and I have the great privilege of serving as Parliamentary Secretary for Education. Two things I know. I spent a lot of time in schools here and I was just relaying to um, Nicole uh, some experiences that I had in India recently. Increasingly schools across the world are being asked to incorporate, include kids from um, with disabilities and uh, we as a government acknowledge that and that's one of the reasons we have the, um, we had the review of the program for students with disabilities and it's also why we've especially got an inclusive schools fund. I know in my own electorate I have a school that has 750 kids in it and it has 70 of those kids with a disability. It's a school of choice for parents whose kids have got a disability. And uh, we've built this amazing room here at this school out of the inclusive school fund and fitted it out with equipment that is um, task specific 
And these, the children, the families, I've got to say, they liked going to Kilberry Valley Primary School beforehand, but they love going to that school now. And the problem the principal has now is that too many kids want to come to that school. Um, but we also are very committed to making sure that the training our teachers get when they are training, when they're here at Deakin or at their My National Melbourne, wherever, they do get some time where they do specific training that highlights how to be inclusive in the classroom of all students and parents also. Very important to make sure that a parent of a child with a disability is very much included in this um, child's education. I've got to tell you, not to do that is the greatest risk you can take because they end up in my office and then <laughs> I have to come down. So I actually, uh, the second thing I wanted to pinpoint was the fact that we know that early intervention is so critical. I had an experience the other day when I was down at a uh, kindergarten and it was at a very multicultural setting. And this kindergarten was attached to a primary school and it was deliberately so because the school was saying that the children were coming badly equipped or poorly equipped to start school. So the principal specifically developed a kindergarten and early childhood centre, so play groups and a bit of maternal child health monitoring in there as well. And she said to me, Do you see that little boy over there? And she said, he came here with virtually no language. He was not speaking. And one of the things that they did was that they took them, they talked about the beach, it was summer, it's the start of the school term. And they said to him, this is the sand at the beach. And he did not know what sand was. And we think we live in a very, very um, well-off society, and we do. But there are such pockets of disadvantage and disengagement within our community that that early intervention of that, that child being picked up at kindergarten and being able to get the extra support they need, I think, watching his behaviour, that he probably had was a bit on the autism spectrum as well, that he was going to have the best possible start that our government and that our community, the Victorian state, can give to them. So I'm very, very, um, very, very pleased that um, a lot of the work that is happening here is focused right down there at that space that we all know is so important. In fact, what is it, the first five years set you up for the rest of your life. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge another organisation which I have had some um, experiences with, and that is AMAZE. Uh, AMAZE is a terrific organisation and I know that um, on World Autism Day a couple of weeks ago, AMAZE brought another great addition of the Spectrospective to Victoria's cinema screens. And uh, this year's film focused on the education experience of people with autism and I gather the, um, the film has given a lot of people great insights into the challenges they face. So. This is a collaborative, a collaborative effort. It's a fantastic facility. It's got great research happening here. And I've got to say to the researchers, I think you've probably picked the great best place on campus to nestle down into. Um, it's got panoramic views and well fitted out. And I'm very, very proud to support, and the government is too, the Deakin Child Study Centre. Uh, you're going to give so many parents, so many families, so much hope for the future, uh, you'll, in this room, provide such comfort to so many other people in the community as well, who really struggle to find a brighter future, and to my neighbours next door. Well, lots of us have got neighbours next door that just need this sort of support. So congratulations, and it is my um, great pleasure to be here to um, open, officially open the Deakin Child Study Centre. Thank you. Well said. Thank you very much, uh, Parliamentary Secretary, Ms Grayley. I'm now delighted to introduce Deputy Vice-Chancellor Professor Gary Smith to the stage. Professor Smith was appointed Deputy Vice-Chancellor for Global Engagement in May 2013. Now, in this role, he provides strategic leadership at Deakin for the development, nurturing and monitoring of both domestic and international academic and research partnerships, which is certainly very relevant to the DCSC. 
uh, but also the branding, marketing and positioning of the university globally and the recruitment of both domestic and international students. So please welcome to the stage Deputy Vice-Chancellor Professor Smith. Uh, thanks Peter uh, um, and uh, welcome everyone here and especially and thank you for that wonderful uh, uh, speech just then. Um, uh, Judith, that was fantastic. Uh, look, our Vice Chancellor sends her apologies. She has a, uh, really has a commitment she cannot avoid this morning, and she can't be here. Um, I would like, also like to acknowledge the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations, the traditional custodians of the land on which we're gathered, and pay respect to them for their care of the land. Um, and of course, uh, welcome distinguished guests, and of course to acknowledge Nicole, Professor Nicole Reinhardt, the leader of this fabulous Child Study Centre. Oh, look, we're very proud at Deakin of the work being done by the centre, um, that's for sure. Uh, it exemplifies so much of what we take as really important, a multidisciplinary approach, innovation in research, and perhaps most importantly a platform which brings researchers and our partners in industry, broadly speaking, here together uh, to make a difference in the communities we serve. Uh, Deakin makes a point of trying to work closely with government, research and community partners, and it's supported by funding here from the National Disability and Insurance Agency, philanthropic and community partnerships, as we've discussed some of them with AFL, Moose Toys, Ferraro. Uh, the Deakin Child Study Centre translates evidence-based science into practical outcomes that will make a difference in the lives of young people to meet the challenges that we've just heard about in a very personal challenge to next door. And all of us are touched by people who will be uh, affected positively by the work of this centre, that's for sure. Uh, working with the community to create a truly inclusive environment. Um, um, and we've had a discussion this morning uh, about the work in India that we're now involved with at the centre here and the um, moves in India to try and get into the inclusion space in the school system and how uh, our work here may be able to assist. Um, We take the diversity thing very strongly at Deakin as well, I say, in all the work we do, in the way we run the organisation, the way we promote creativity here. Uh, and we hope in our own operation as a university we exemplify some of the values that you're seeking to work through here in the centre. Um, you're focused here on child-centred solutions uh, for students with neurodevelopmental disorders, such as we've discussed, aut autism spectrum, ADHD and the like. Um, some of the um, initiatives are the All Play Footy, the All Play Better Footy for Arab Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, the All Play Dance, and the Joy of Moving Australia are these evidence-based solutions that will make a difference to children's lives. So that's the strength of the research that we're doing here, is to get the effective and proven solutions that we can take out into the community. And I hear you're going to have some sort of community-oriented laboratory here facing out to provide services to families. <coughs> I don't know how you're going to manage the demand that that will create, <laughs> but that's fantastic and that will give you a huge further connection to the community uh, immediately around this campus for the first, in the first instance. So I'm now delighted to formally introduce the director of the Deakin Child Study Centre, Professor Nicole Reinhardt. Nicole holds a chair of clinical psychology at Deakin as an honorary fellow of the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Nicole currently serves on the board of directors of Autism Victoria and has contributed to the National Health and Medical Research Clinical Practice Statement for ADHD and the Revision of Australian Therapeutic Guidelines for Developmental Disabilities and a lot more. So, Nicole, welcome. Great. Uh, thank you, Deputy Vice-Chancellor. And thank you and a welcome again to the Parliamentary Secretary for Education. We're delighted to have you here. It's my absolute privilege to have all of you here today. When I started practicing as a clinical psychologist in 1997, a long time ago, autism was considered a rare disorder. Children with ADHD were still on the naughty kids list in the corner. Both of these neurodevelopmental disorders were really poorly understood. There were vast gaps in our knowledge of understanding of these most vulnerable children, and that was only in 1997. But that was my inspiration to leave the clinic at that time and to pursue research. In the year I graduated from my PhD, I remember another pivotal moment and it was reading this quote. It takes 17 years to turn 14% of original research to the benefit of patient care. 17 years to translate only 14% to the benefit of patient care. 
Fast forward another 10 years and now we're in 2013 um, and I'm back in the clinic and I was confronted with the reality that this quote was absolutely true. There was the same advice, the same interventions um, and most importantly, the same barriers for these kids. Nothing was changing, even though there was millions of dollars of research going into the area, we simply were not seeing it in the clinic and we weren't seeing it translate to real differences on the ground. And really that was the key driver to establish this, the Deakin Child Study Centre, to join the dots between research and the community and really make science matter for all children. The question was how? How does a group of researchers do that? Um, the solution was to come up with a new platform and we did. And the platform is to bring together government, industry, philanthropy and the community, the peak bodies. Bring together the grassroots, the mums and the dads who live with developmental disabilities every day and their children. And then at Deakin to wrap this incredible research engine around it of clinical trials, neuroscience, health economics, IT. Um, we are like kids in the candy shop at Deakin University. We have every cutting edge neuroscience um, to translational science at our fingertips. And then what do we do with that? So we've got the peak bodies, the grassroots, we've wrapped the research around it. And then to take that and to translate it into solutions and resources that are so simple for the public um, that they barely even know what's behind it. But it creates an opportunity then to break down the barriers with knowledge and resources and to make many of these barriers just disappear. It took the world's recently crowned entrepreneur of the world, Manny Stuhl, founder of Moose Toys, CEO, exactly 10 minutes to understand that this was a unique platform and the way forward for child research. That was in 2016 uh, and others soon followed. Thank you to Moose Toys for leading the way and Belinda Grubner, the head of the Moose Foundation is here today. We are also indebted to the NDIA, Ferrero, the Australian Football League, Jonathan and Simone Wenig, the Geelong Community Foundation and Mecca Brands for, for providing the vital additional funding that we need um, to make the Deakin Child Study Centre come alive. And there's a beautiful plaque just over there that's um, acknowledging all of our incredible supporters um, who've really brought us here today. And so acknowledging your funding is my absolute honour. But by far for me, the biggest success is that we've created this platform together and it works and it is magnificent, more magnificent than we could have dreamed of. I wanted to share a special moment from this last Saturday. Um, we were conducting our third All Play pre-learn day um, and we were hosted um, at St Kilda for the second time in their magnificent new club rooms at, at Moorabbin and um, you wouldn't think that a child study centre and a football club would be aligned but we are completely aligned in that we have a direct link to the community so we felt right at home at St Kilda, they're our natural partnership in the community. Um, and there's a group of individuals in the room and you know who you are. And we sat together around the table eating lunch and um, just had this aha, pinch me moment. Are we all really sitting here from industry, from philanthropy, from the community, from the sporting world, all of the leaders um, talking about how we are going to solve these problems together for the next 10 years. Um, in this world leading um, partnership model. We know it's world leading because we've been talking to our colleagues all over the world and um, they haven't had this opportunity that we have. I'm so proud of the achievements of the Deakin Child Study Centre. The centre is developing strong and confident multidisciplinary teams. Um, we're working on a variety pro of projects, but they're all about our broader vision to change the lives of one in five children who'll experience developmental challenge and make a real difference. We are focused and we are very committed. And to this end, the Deakin Child Study Centre difference, I think, is our people, our people here and our research team. Every researcher, whether they're in their first week of training, a shout out to Hope, who I can see there, um, or our professoriate, um, the incredible Jane McGillray, Peter Entercott, Emma Skibiris, or our rising stars, Nicole Papadopoulos, Carmel, Tamara May, we all work towards the same goal. And we go further than publishing and grant writing. We're committed to changing the lives of children where they live, learn and play 
And there is not one study that happens in the Deakin Child Study Centre that doesn't end up in translation. That is our 100% mantra and commitment. It means it's a big job, but um, we're, we're, we're okay. Um, now, I just want to repeat myself once more. This is a quote I've used many times in the last few months, and I've had some fabulous meetings recently with Ferrero and Moose and our other colleagues. So you've heard this, you've heard this quote, but it's an important one because it signals the central force I see for the success of the Deakin Child Study Centre. So for the three people in the room who haven't heard this quote, I think there could only be three, I've said it so often, if we want to go fast, we go alone. If we want to go far, we go together. So thank you everyone for coming together to build the Deakin Child Study Centre. Thank you both uh, very much, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Professor Smith and Professor Reinhardt uh, for those uh, wonderful words. So I'd now like to invite the Parliamentary Secretary for Education, Ms Grayley MP, back to the stage. Uh, and I ask that Ms Grayley conduct the official opening of the Deakin Child Study Centre and the unveiling of the plaques. Da -da -da -da. <laughs>